The Brooklyn Nets recently traded for James Harden, which thus far this season is easily the biggest story of the year. And because of this trade, their ceiling as a team went up rather drastically. Now having Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving alongside James Harden, the offensive ceiling on this team is pretty much unlimited, being that those are three of the best offensive players in the league. However, this team has not exactly looked perfect despite this incredible amount of talent. They have still been good, only losing two games with James Harden out of eight thus far, but there are some pretty clear flaws flaws with this roster and really one major flaw that one being defense defense is a big flaw for this team they are currently 23rd in defensive rating and 26th in points allowed per game now you might be thinking well the offense on this team is so good that it can make up for that lack of great defense and for the most part that is true but unfortunately at the highest level at a championship level which is of course the goal of a team with this much talent that's not really the case because out of the last 20 years only two teams have won a championship championship despite not being top 10 in defensive rating those teams being the 2001 Lakers and the 2018 Golden State Warriors and the Warriors were 11th in defense and that's like just outside obviously and then they turned up their defense in the playoffs and the Lakers were first in defense the year prior and top 10 the year after so I think they were just kind of lazy defensively during the regular season and then they also picked it back up in the playoffs so even then those are really two top 10 defenses that just weren't acting like it. So in order to win a championship, you really kind of have to be a top 10 defensive team in the league. And the Brooklyn Nets are a bottom 10 defensive team in the league right now, which is not good. This team badly needs defense, but with Joe Harris's contract being essentially the only valuable thing that they have, as well as DeAndre Jordan's contract and second round picks, because they have no first round picks for the future, making a trade to drastically improve this defense is not going to be easy and with there not being all that many free agents available either improving this team's defense in this particular season before going into next offseason is not going to be an easy task so today i wanted to give my plan on how to improve the brooklyn nets to the point where they can win a championship in 2021 and of course the focus is going to be pretty much entirely on the defense here because the defense is perfect so here is my plan for how to improve the brooklyn nets <laughs> Before we get into this video's topic, about half of the people that watch these videos are not subscribed. So if you're watching videos consistently on this channel and you are not subscribed already, please be sure to do that so you can see these videos every time they show up as well as fuel my ego. Also drop a like on this video. It only takes one second and it makes a massive difference. The biggest thing to address with this team has to be the interior defense because perimeter defense wise, they're actually not too bad. Kevin Durant, when he puts up the effort is actually one of the better perimeter defensive players in the league. He even at one point argued that he was worthy of Defensive Player of the Year. Now, I don't believe that was true, but he is certainly an all-defensive caliber guy when he wants to be. And come playoff time, when they need him to elevate his game to that point, I think he would, so perimeter defense is not a huge issue for this team. On top of that, James Harden has been pretty good defensively on the perimeter. I know people like to meme on James Harden as a defender, but he has drastically improved over the past couple of years. And even Kyrie Irving, as not great at defense as he is, he still puts up the effort when he needs to and is at least not a complete liability on that end. Also, Joe Harris, who, I mean, this team's going to be trading in my hypothetical anyways, he puts up effort on defense and he has decent size, so I'd say he's about middle of the pack defensively. So the perimeter defense on this team, not too bad. Interior defense, on the other hand, pretty fucking bad because DeAndre Jordan is just simply not the player that he used to be, and I would even argue that DeAndre Jordan in his younger days when he was in his prime still wasn't quite the defensive player that many people hyped him up to be just because he was not good at getting outside of the paint and that rim protection really isn't there with the Brooklyn Nets anymore. The one thing that he brought defensively that was really good hasn't been that good now. Really he's not bringing a whole lot and at 10 million dollars per year that's not exactly ideal. So the center position is the biggest one that the Nets need to address. One rumor that came out recently was that the Cleveland Cavaliers would potentially try and buy out Andre Drummond and if they did that the Nets would be the front runner to land him. Andre Drummond and this Nets team what does that look like personally my opinion on Andre Drummond has gone down drastically over the last year or so I used to believe he was a top 50 player in the league now I don't I'm not even really sure is he top 100 I'm not entirely sure 
But as low as I am on Andre Drummond to say that getting him for like a $1 million deal to be your starting center would be a bargain is a bit of an understatement. However, he's not really going to address the root problem with this team, which is defense, because Andre Drummond is like a slightly above average defensive center, and I'd say DeAndre Jordan is like pretty much in the same ballpark and the issue with Andre Drummond is that he is rather shot happy he shoots like 16 shots per game on this Cavs team this year and I ain't want that on the nets I do not want him trying to take a bunch of shots away from Kyrie KD and James Harden now I'm sure his shots would be reduced on that team and he would understand that and expect that but he's gonna have those possessions where he tries to shoot the ball too much also you might make the argument of well Andre Drummond helps him in the rebounding department and for the most part that is true Although his rebounding percentage has always been kind of bad, it would suggest that his actual rebounding is not as good and he kind of inflates his rebounding stats. But regardless of all that nerd shit, the Nets are top 10 in rebounding right now. And I don't think that's going to go anywhere by trading DeAndre Jordan for a different center. So they should be fine in that department. Kevin Durant's a good rebounder. James Harden is a good rebounder. So that's not really a flaw that they really need to address. But if Andre Drummond does get bought out, which honestly I don't, think it's going to, yeah, give Andre Drummond a shot, but don't expect him to be the savior. Do not expect getting him to just fix all of your defensive problems because he's absolutely not going to be doing that. Now let's talk about some cheap free agency options at the center department. This team recently signed a Norvell Pell who has a cool ass name and also could potentially be a defensive guy. Don't know much about him. Nicholas Claxton is on this team currently. He has had health stuff. I looked up a scouting report of him. He projects to be a good defensive player. So that could be something. But in terms of actual free agents, Jonah Bolden is someone that I've always thought had defensive potential, also can stretch the floor at 6'10". A 90-year-old Tyson Chandler and 90-year-old Joe Kim Noah are available, although being that they are 90 years old, I might pass on that. John Henson averages 2.7 blocks a game per 36 for his career. He is a pretty damn good rim protector. Uh, that's something that the Nets have been lacking, and even though his overall defense and his rebounding are not amazing, and he has no offensive game outside of one foot away from the basket, he is somebody that could at least help them in the rim protection department. But by far my favorite option available has to be Dwayne Dedman. Dwayne has had a rough couple of years, like the last two years or so. He signed with the Sacramento Kings, and he was traded to the Hawks, then I think he got traded to the Pistons? Uh, I think, but either way, he's not great, but he is pretty solid all around. And I would just hope that the last two years of struggle have not been really what he is now, and it's just been just that struggle. And he is a guy who can be pretty good defensively and then offensively stretch the floor at a respectable rate, rebound pretty well, and be a guy who you can give like 18 minutes a game at the center position and expect him not to make too many mistakes. But unfortunately, regardless of all those names I just said, I'm not expecting any of them to be really like game-changing players for them because none of those guys are players that I think would be good enough to get more than like 20 minutes per game as I mentioned with Deadman. So really this team needs to trade for a center and once more the options are not amazing but they are out there. But we have to consider what I mentioned earlier the assets that the Brooklyn Nets actually have. Joe Harris makes about 16 million dollars a year and he is one of probably the five best shooters in the NBA and he's pretty good just all around as well. Like he's a decent ball handler, decent defender, decent rebounder. He's just a good role player to have on your team. Shamit could be viewed as a young asset because he is young and he's a pretty a good three-point shooter although if I'm trading Joe Harris I would like to keep Landry Shamit to fill in that spot shooter role and then there is of course DeAndre Jordan's 10 million per year contract which could be problematic trading because both Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving are really good friends with DeAndre and it seems like they're kind of calling the shots in Brooklyn but if you can convince them that trading DeAndre is what's best for the team and best for them winning a championship then you do that you move his contract alongside with Joe Harris which combined gets you to about 20 six million dollars per year and if you add i don't even remember his name tyler johnson's contract who makes about two million dollars on top of that you can get to 28 million per year that is a decent amount of salary however the problem is that that amount of money usually translates to a really good player and a really good player needs more than just joe harris being traded for him so you're going to be having to trade for a player whose value is under what his contract is and it's unfortunate that you're going to have to take on another bad contract but unfortunately with this team they already have bad contracts anyways are not really bad contracts but just a whole lot of salary so 
might as well lean into the salary cap hell that they're already in. Also, as I mentioned earlier, while trading Joe Harris does hurt, unfortunately, this team can live without his offense because they have the offense and they really need the defense and he is by far their best tradable asset. So it is what it is. And though Landry Shamit has been bad this year, 30% from three, he's getting like 17 minutes and he is a defensive liability. He can at least be the guy who comes in for like 20 minutes a game and is a very good three-point shooter. So you can at least hope that Joe Harris and what he's traded for plus Landry Shamit is more valuable than just Joe Harris, if that makes sense. Here are some potential trades. The first name that came to mind was Clint Capella. If their rookie Akongwu really impressed them later in the season and they would like another shooter, but they already have a lot of perimeter guys and Clint Capella has been good for them this year and he helps their defense, which would be pretty shit without him. So I believe that is a stretch. Another one is Daniel Gafford, Thad Young, and Thomas Sadoransky from the Bulls. Daniel Gafford is a really good rim protector, though his overall defense is not amazing, especially stepping outside of the paint, but he is a guy who can protect the paint for you. Also, Thad Young can play small ball five. He has done it very successfully for the Bulls this year. Other than when we're playing a real center, he can really be effective at that five spot. And Sadoransky isn't bad defensively. He can be a spot shooter and a playmaker and an overall rotation player, or you could use him as a trade ship. You could take the gamble on Aaron Baines and keep Joe for another trade later. Aaron Baines has been bad for the Toronto Raptors this year, but he could recover. Joe for Miles Turner would be great, but with how good Turner has been this year, I doubt the Pacers would be interested in that. Maybe a year ago, but you miss that opportunity really. And my favorite trade by far, which will probably annoy a lot of people, is Al Horford straight up. Look, I know Al Horford is not NBA fans' favorite player, nor was he ever, but the idea that Al Horford is washed is just simply not true. Al Horford is not washed. Al Horford is pretty similarly as good this year as he was like two, three years ago. He was just in a shit position on the Philadelphia 76ers, and even though he was, his numbers were still pretty comparable. His numbers from his year in Philadelphia and his year previous in Boston were nearly identical, and he shot well from three and he's still one of the best defensive centers in the NBA today so I think that trade would actually be worth it and as for why OKC takes this they're trying to get off of Al Horford's contract and with Joe Harris being like 26 I think they can view him as a future asset a guy that they could either trade themselves as we know Sam Pressy likes to do or he can just be a good long-term rotation player for them so I like that Al Horford trade the most another thing to talk about is the Kyrie Irving trade idea not gonna lie kind of clickbaited with the thumbnail a little bit here but I would not trade Kyrie unless it was for one of like Paul George and maybe and I mean maybe Rudy Gobert just because even though Gobert's future contract is bad that is going to drastically improve your defense and I think Utah would be interested in the prospect of making Kyrie Irving and Donovan Mitchell a thing though with Mike Conley looking really good this year for Utah maybe they'd rather just have him and Gobert but regardless of that one I think Kyrie might just retire if you did that and that would prevent Utah from being interested in that I would argue that the potential of Kyrie Irving with James Harden and Kevin Durant offensively outweighs the difference in defense that would create the only one that I would really confidently do is him for Paul George even though I believe Kyrie is better than Paul George Paul George brings that perimeter defense at an elite level and he is still a very good three-point shooter and shot creator and he is much less worse as a third option in the playoffs than he would be as a second option so if he's having a bad game you still have Kevin Durant and James Harden on your team but other than a Paul George trade I'd probably just keep Kyrie Irving also there is some perimeter defense that could still be improved on this team and there are some available free agents the the easy option is Andre Roberson. He cannot shoot for shit, but is one of the best defenders in the NBA. Has been unhealthy the past couple of years, but he is back and could definitely contribute. Wilson Chandler is a good 3 and D player, as is Marvin Williams, as is Damari Carroll. Rondé Hollis Jefferson really showed defensive potential on the Timberwolves before they released him for some reason. Tabo Cephalosha is a respectable player. I would personally choose from that group Andre Roberson and Damari Carroll. I think Rondé Hollis as well as Andre Roberson are the best defensive two out of that group, but I really like Jeff Green and think he should be a rotation player for this team, so I think Rondé would kind of take away from that as both of those guys need to be playing power forward. So let's say you do the Al Horford trade and then sign Andre Roberson as well as Damari Carroll. Your new starting lineup would be Kyrie Irving, Andre Roberson, or Shamit, depending on the matchup, or maybe even Bruce Brown, because he's kind of a middle between those two. 
James Harden at small forward, which I think is fine, Kevin Durant at power forward, and Al Horford at center, with Shamit, Bruce Brown, Dwayne Dedman, Jeff Green, and Damari Carroll off of the bench. Now, is that enough defense to be top 10 in defense? I think if the players on the team fully bought in on that end, then maybe. But even if they don't, I think they could probably be top 15 defensively, just because Al Horford, I believe, will make that big of a difference. But I like these moves. Let me know what you think of them in the comment section. I still don't necessarily think these moves would make me pick them as the championship favorite, but it would make me like them a whole lot more. And though you are sacrificing some offense with the loss of Joe Harris, I think the offense is going to be just fine with Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, and fucking James Harden on top of it. If you did not know, I launched a second channel where I react to NBA games every night outside of one day per week. There is one about the games that happened on Saturday, and there's going to be one later today reacting to today's games. So go subscribe to that channel to get my reactions as a Kenny for real type of thing. Also, shout out to Rudy for editing this video, but that is the end of this video. Please be sure to like and subscribe for more NBA content like this, and keep watching music. This recording was really long. I, I'm so sorry. I got to get used to this bullet point type of editing or recording.